desolation. Barren stretches of land. Bizarre plants. Landscapes that seem from out of this world. This is a geography shaped by desert and water. It is usually the presence of deserts and absence of water that define living conditions here. Contrary to popular belief, there are many who have adapted to the tough conditions here. Surprising forms of life appear in the most unexpected of places. There is water, and then there is not. The springs here are dry for most of the year. Surprisingly, the most stable source of water is fog. Even a single drop is critical for the creatures in this geography. This is the story of the wild wonders of Namibia, home to some of the rarest forms of life. It is a new day in Arindi, and the creatures are slowly waking up. First, some grooming. And then, it's time to feed. Red-beaked quellia birds. Arindi's wetlands must be one of the most fertile places in Namibia for birds to breed and feed. The chicks join the frenzy only 15 days after hatching. Some of the largest flocks in the world can be found in this geography. The population of the quellia birds feeding here can quickly reach 2 million. Although most of Arindi is arid, water sources that surface throughout the year are a lifeline for many creatures. But this does not mean that wetlands are safe places. Thirsty animals eager for water must be on alert at all times. There are crocodiles even in the smallest of Arendi's water holes. Crocodiles are no threat to hippos. The crocodile is sensible enough not to make a move on an adult. However, calves have to remain by their mothers at all times. One mistake could cost a life. While impalas and springboks feed on the open plains, giraffes enjoy feeding off treetops, where most other animals are unable to reach. Giraffes lick salt off rocks to get the minerals they need, but like all animals, they have to drink water regularly. The elephants are restless. They are eager to quench their thirst, but the winds are bringing in scents of danger from all directions. Elephants might be the largest land mammals, 
but they still have to be alert in this unforgiving geography. The scent that reaches the elephant's nose is not that far from the waterhole they are at. Lions have caught a wildebeest. They drag their prey into the shrubs to avoid unwelcome attention from vultures and thus hyenas and jackals. The catch will be enough for three siblings for a few days. The sun slowly moves down closer to the horizon. It is the end of another day in the wetlands of Arendi. Located to the northeast of Arendi, Kadum is one of the forgotten corners of Namibia. A true sanctuary for life, Kadum is quite rich in flora, despite mostly consisting of expanses of sand-covered desert a variety of dense thorny bushes and an assortment of acacia trees make the place look completely untouched. The 3,000 elephants inhabiting this place are greater in number than the people who visit the park annually. Hunters must drink water after every hunt, but they cannot stay here for long. Once they quench their thirst, they have to rest in the shade until the next day. The rulers of Kadum are the hefty elephants. Here, they drink water, but they also bathe to get relief from the scorching African sun. As the day slowly comes to an end in Kadum, it is time for the hunters to take stage. Having slept throughout the day, the lion will first drink water before starting its search for prey. Most of Namibia might be desert, but there are rivers that run throughout the year, even if flow rates vary. Acting as the national boundary with Angola, Kunene River is one of them. And the last stop on the river is Epupa Falls. The water travels over dozens of terraces that stretch out for almost one and a half kilometers. The name Epupa is the Herrero word for cloud of water. The river, which cascades for only a short period each year, gradually drains through rocks and disappears. Beginning in central Angola and draining into the Okavango Delta, Kavango River feeds a much wider area. Before reaching Botswana, Kavango runs for the entire length of Namibia and creates seasonal floodplains in the country's Caprivi region. Mahongo is one of the region's most important game reserves. The 25,000 hectare park contains diverse habitats. The river and reed-covered wetlands nearby 
are one of Mahongo's most spectacular. Buffalo and hippos are the regulars of these wetlands. Contrary to most antelope species, the red lechwe likes wetlands and is often seen alongside buffalo and aquatic birds. Meadows and forests stretch along the borders of the wetlands. Although tall acacias dominate the geography, the giant baobab that seem to be scattered over Mahongo are admittedly the most eye-catching of trees. As the sun ascends, many animals seek shade in the forest. But this is feeding time for the cold-blooded Nile monitor. Wetlands are surrounded by savannas, covered by dwarf scrubs and teak trees. Food is plentiful in the savanna, so it attracts many animals. One of the most unique creatures of the savanna must be the elegant roan antelope. They are an endangered species, and Mahongo is one of their last sanctuaries. The pale-colored animal with a hefty body and spectacular horns is safe in this reserve. All of the animals in the savanna must have regular access to water. For many creatures, the river and wetlands of Mahongo are quite deep and full of dangers. However, there are year-round water holes on some of the plains that stretch out between the vegetation. Experienced females bring the herd to these sources of water. And in doing so, convey this vital knowledge to future generations. The nature of Mahongo might be mesmerizing. However, the nearby Rupara National Park is home to exceptionally high populations of different animals. Vegetation is dense in Rupara making it attractive for antelope species and giraffes. This national park holds an important secret. Elephants. Rupara is an oasis for elephants in this dry terrain. During the wet season, animals migrate here from as far as Angola, Namibia, and Botswana. The riverbanks are meeting points for herds. This mega herd will continue enjoying Rupara until the waters recede and grass dries. This immense stretch of land might seem inhabited, yet it could be home to one of the most magnificent wonder of nature in the Namib Desert. The only way to witness this phenomenon, known as the fairy circles, is to have a bird's eye view of the region. There, are several hypotheses concerning fairy circles, but scientists are still far from finding a satisfying answer for this unusual formation. Some argue that it is plants competing for water, while others implicate 
prevailing winds, and underground termite nests. Whatever the cause, fairy circles deserve to be called mysterious. Fairy circles are not the only wonders of this geography. Water might be scarce here, but what there is has been enough to permanently shape the landscape. It is a desert, but there is vegetation nonetheless. The riverbeds here have been dry for thousands of years. A minimal amount of water brought in from the rains falling up north is enough to sustain life in this landscape. All the water here is underground. However, nature has a surprise for these lands with near to none rainfall. Nearly every morning, fog clouds rush in from the ocean deep into the desert making it the major source of water in the region. Rocks might not appear to be the best place to take root, but these plants depend on water drops trapped between rocks after fog condensates. There are creatures here which seem to have seamlessly adapted to the grains of sand blown about by unceasing winds and the challenge of finding water. Even elephants, the largest land mammal in the world, are dwarfed by this geography. Elephants are enduring animals, but the desert can take its toll on them too. Competition for limited food has forced them to keep smaller herds compared to their relatives roaming the savanna. Puros Hills. In the dry riverbed beyond these hills are trees with nutritious leaves. The reward is great, but the trip is quite challenging. To get there, giraffes have to walk for miles over these hills under the scorching sun. Predators are rare in Poros. The giraffe's greatest natural enemy here is nature itself. It is the early hours of the day in the Namib, and the layer of fog carried in from the ocean has enshrouded the desert. The fog will disperse with sunrise. One of the longest living plants in the world, the Welwitzia, relies on the morning fog to survive. Despite its large and expansive appearance, it actually only has two leaves. Many of the Welwitzias in the desert are more than 1,000 years old. Looking at the strange plants, trees that died six centuries ago in massive sand dunes, the Namib might seem deserted. It might be one of the animals most resilient to desert conditions. However, even the oryx needs water. There are oases in the desert of Atosha. Some of the water sources here will keep running throughout the dry season. The animals here share a common objective, finding water. The most challenging of times in the desert can be overcome if the oryx can reach water 
like other animals. Lions do not have to waste their precious energy. They know that herbivores must reach water. They will wait patiently until their arrival. The first animals to reach the water side are nervous. They know what awaits them. However, the heat and thirst is unbearable. They watch their surroundings with careful eyes. Soon, the source will be overcrowded. They will not be safe until then. Thousands of animals have gathered. New arrivals are eager to quench their thirst. With chicks waiting back at their nests, flocks of birds land on the water. This jackal must make the most of this opportunity. It has pups to feed too. The birds are quick. The jackal must do better. A failed hunt could jeopardize future generations. Scorching heat, a challenging geography, and extreme conditions. Drought and occasionally floods draw the fine line between life and death in Namibia. Nature has to hold its breath until the water brought in with the rains exhilarate life, even if only briefly. Until the next wet season, life will continue at the limits and creatures will struggle to survive. Namibia's fascinating nature will keep on enduring these challenges, as it has done since the beginning of time.